Hello, I'm Caroline Weaver from Body and Soul Companion, and I had to leave where I usually do these, and I thought, oh, I'll just do it on Zoom. I can't have my advent wreath in this room, so I thought I'll just have a picture of my actual advent wreath with the two candles lit for the second week of Advent. And if you're not doing this according to the liturgical year, no problem. Today, we are reading um, this about the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. And this, oh dear, there it is. <laughs> this is my cross. And I even, I put it up. My, my nieces made this point. So I have to tape it up there. It doesn't ever stay on the Jesse tree. I, I should probably make another cross. Can you see it? Whoa. There you go. Oh, it's hard to see. But all that to say is that um, I have a sentimental attachment. But it's about the suffering servant. These are the group of servant, um, servant song, or servant, I guess, it, what would you call them? I'm trying to remember exactly what they're called. Servant songs, not songs, but servant songs in Isaiah. And we did one servant song in Isaiah 42 and in week 11. And we'll do more in the future. But this is um, the in within the servant songs. And this is about the suffering servant. And it's a longer passage. So we won't read through it four times like we usually do for Lexio Di, uh, Divina, but I'll just guide you through, um, guide you through it, and maybe a little bit differently today. So I invite you to close your eyes, to breathe slowly. And to recenter your scattered senses on the presence of God. This is a time for slowing down and letting go of any tension in your body and also letting go of preoccupations in your mind. So imagine yourself just as it says, be still and know that I am God in Psalm 4610. In the margin, it says, let go, relax, and know that I am God. So imagine yourself giving over, letting go of anything that's preoccupying you under. Giving, letting go, and giving it over to God. I'll be reading Isaiah, all of Isaiah 53 today. But first, let's prepare with our preparatory prayer. I pray that more of my day would be directed to your service and praise. And I seek the grace to understand your perfect plan from creation to Christ's incarnation. Isaiah 53 in the Amplified. Who has believed, confidently trusted in, relied on, and adhered to our message of salvation? To whom, if not us, has the arm and infinite power of the war been revealed? For he, the servant of God, grew up before him like a tender shoot tender plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He has no stately form or majesty, majestic splendor, that, he would, that we would look at him, nor handsome appearance that we would be attracted to him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and pain 
and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and we did not appreciate his worth or esteem him. But in fact, he has borne our griefs and he has carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we ignorantly assume that he was stricken, struck down by God and degraded and humiliated by him. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, his wounds, we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wickedness of us all, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, to fall on him instead of us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth to complain or defend himself. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before her shears, so he did not open his mouth. After oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, his contemporaries, who among them concerned himself with the fact that he was cut off from the land of the living by his death. For the transgression of my people to whom the stroke of death was due. His grave was assigned with the wicked, but he was with a rich man in his death because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet the Lord was willing to crush him, causing him to suffer, if he would give himself as a guilt offering, an atonement for sin. He shall see his spiritual offspring, he shall prolong his days, and the will, the good pleasure of the Lord shall succeed and prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he shall see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge of what he has accomplished, the righteous one, my servant, shall justify the many, making them righteous, upright before God, in right standing with him. For he shall bear the responsibility for their sins. Therefore, I will divide and give him a portion with the great kings and rulers, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he willingly poured out his life to death and was counted among the transgressors. Yet he himself bore and took away the sin of many and interceded with the Father for the transgressors. Let's just sit with that amplified reading. Now I'm going to read it the second time. The Amplified always amplifies it, makes it a little bit longer. I'm going to read it in the New American Standard. Um, but hopefully the Amplified kind of amplified some of the words in it. So I'll read it and ask God. It's a lot of verses, so you might want to have them in front of you visually. Um, Isaiah 53, it's the whole chapter. But just as you look at the words and hear me read the words, 
what words, what word, single word or phrase, or even one of the verses that sticks out to you. I want you to really, whatever God highlights for you, really reflect on it more deeply. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we would look at him, nor an appearance that we would take pleasure in him. He was despised and abandoned by men, a man of great pain and familiar with sickness, and like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we had no regard for him. However, it was our sicknesses that he himself bore and our pains that he carried. Yet we ourselves assumed that he had been afflicted, struck down by God and humiliated. But he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wrongdoing of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living for the wrongdoing of my people to whom the blow was due? And his grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But the Lord desired to crush him, causing him grief, if he renders himself as a guilt offering. He will see his offspring, he will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many for he will bear their wrongdoings. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the plunder with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was counted with wrongdoers. Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the wrongdoers. So what word or phrase shimmered for you. Reflect upon that. You might want to look at the words and reflect. And then in your reflection, I want you to think about what do you feel emotional about for the suffering servant? I want you to feel, get in touch with your feelings about it. This is obviously a prophecy of Jesus. So see him being crushed for iniquities. See him bearing our griefs. 
being oppressed and afflicted, being pierced for our transgressions and offenses. I want you to feel Ignatius was big on getting in touch with your emotions. What is it? What do you feel when you read this passage? And turn off the video if you need more time to process that. This is a long passage. But we're going to enter into silence. And yesterday I was in a silent prayer time. And the woman sang beforehand. And so I'm going to sing. This is all impromptu. Um, because many years ago, about 40 years ago, at, while meditating on this psalm or on this um, passage in Isaiah, God gave me a song for, for it from this. Mm -hmm. And so I'll sing it. And also another way for you to meditate is for yourself to write a song or paint, paint something from this or draw something from this. Um, do something creative. That's another way to meditate. I have one friend, she illustrates with words and um, on her iPad, as she meditates on scripture, she illustrates with words. She illustrates. It's beautiful. Uh, so I'm going to take a drink and then we'll enter into some silence. So this song, oh, <clears throat> this song comes from uh, after meditating on that first, he was despised and abandoned by men, a man of great pain and familiar with sickness. Then it was um, in Four, verses four and five this is what I wrote the song from. Surely our griefs he himself bore and all our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. Yet he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our peace fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. And by his scourging we are healed. Let's enter into silence.
Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I encourage you to be creative with that. This passage, if you want, illustrate, write a poem, write a song. That's a way to meditate. Take your candles or candle or go for a walk. I'm going for a hike with my husband. The sun is supposed to be coming out soon. Um, I wanted to say something else that um, he was despised and afflicted. That is also from Handel's Messiah. So I'll put a link to um, that portion of Handel's Messiah. Someone, well, Jennings took, Jennings, he took the words from scripture, the Old Testament, and then Handel, I'm sorry, in three weeks, wrote a masterpiece of praise to God and ex exaltation of Jesus. It's beautiful. Be blessed.